Let's try our little ice flow in a three channel mode for the $50 sound fly. I'm always looking for something cool to show you guys. I recently came across this $45 amplifier on Amazon, which is already bumped up in price to $49.99, but let's get it out of the box here and see what it's all about. Here's a four page owner's manual, which goes over some of the specifications, technical features, etc. We'll talk about those later. Also comes with Allen's key, a couple of mounting screws and additional fuse. And here is the amp, the SoundFi SA400.4. If you hear me in this video, refer to it as SoundFly. It's really just tongue in cheek, but yeah, this amplifier is tiny in size and honestly very interesting to me with it being only $50. It's like, this is kind of a no brainer for me to try out to show you guys. As you know, I like to show off the expensive amplifiers, but sometimes I like to show off things that are less expensive for those who don't have a lot of money to spend or just want something small. Here on the left side, you can see the remote minus and plus, as well as the fuse. This is a 25 amp mini ATC style fuse, and I'll show it looks like a tooth when you pull it out. But here compared to a standard ATC fuse, you can see how much smaller it is. Again, it does come with an extra in the box. On the right side of the amp, you'll see the speaker outputs and notice the center connector is for a plus and a minus. Yes, that is weird, but it does work because the channels are inverted. We have seen this before on a different model amp. I will leave links in the video description to other amps I've tested that look very similar to this. On the opposite end, once we spin it around, we can see some additional connections here for inputs, also crossover switches and level controls, which is kind of weird that the rear is on the left and the front is on the right. It's a little backwards to me. But anyway, here are the settings. There's no adjustments for high pass or low pass. It's really just off or on or full range. According to the manual, the crossover frequency is 90 hertz for low pass and high pass. Doesn't mention the crossover slope. Also a bass boost of plus 14 dB at 45 hertz, which is not defeatable and apparently is enabled when you use low pass. As for dimensions there, compared to the Pepsi can, you can see how small it is. 5.2 inches for the long side, four inches for the width, 1.8 inches for the height overall, very small amplifier. As for ratings at 13.8 volts, four ohms, 70 watts by four, two ohms, 100 watts by four, or four ohms bridge, 210 by two. As mentioned before, I have tested a Stetson amp, the Hour 400.4, which looks a lot like this SoundFi amp. Sound Digital 400.4 is also about the same size. Again, I'll leave links in the video description if you want to go back, check out those videos to see how those amps perform. Now let's fire up the SMD Demo Engineering Amplifier Dyno so we can test the true output power of this amp. On the left, you'll see the power output in watts. In the middle, you'll see the ohm load. The right will show the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have the remote clamp so that we can calculate this amplifier's efficiency. Hold on to your butts. Well, this amplifier is powered up. It has a blue LED which shows up behind the fuse, which is kind of cool. So first off, let's try the four ohm four channel mode rated 70 watts by four at 13.8. We have two channels loaded down on the dyno. The other two channels are loaded down on four ohm resistors. Certified test first, one kilohertz test track to 1% distortion. Can we get 70 by four? No, we get 50 watts by four. Percentage wise, that's quite a big difference, my friends. Let's try the dynamic test, which sends a one kilohertz pulse tone into the amp and not much better, around 51 watts average per channel. Now let's go on to the two ohm test rated 100 watts by four at 13.8, as shown on the front of the amp, 100 by four RMS, certified test first and not there. Again, about 20% under 80 watts times four, which will give us 320 total when it's rated 400 total. Now dynamically here, we will see some channel discrepancy getting 80 watts on one and 92 on the other. 
at around 14 volts. Next up, we're going to bridge the amplifier down to two channels. And by using the outer terminals here on each side, we can bridge it down and we're gonna try it at four ohms where it is rated 210 watts by two. Certified test takes us up to 1% distortion. As expected, we didn't quite get there. About 168 watts average. Next up, we'll try the dynamic test. See if we can get that 210. And nope, it's not, not gonna get there. Around 175 watts average times two. Here I'll show all the results, including eight ohms, which I didn't show in the video. Also the efficiencies, which were between the mid 70s to the mid 80s. So overall the amplifier did not perform up to its rated specifications, but for the size and for the price, I can't say I'm gonna complain a whole lot about that. For the sound test, we're gonna try it with the Elac bookshelf speakers, two channels, three channels, and then with the sub by itself. Ice flow in a three channel mode for the $50 sound fly. What? I gotta be honest, I did not expect this kind of flexing from this tiny $50 amplifier. So let's see a little bit more. The Savard six and a half inch high Q subwoofer has an RMS power handle of 350 watts, sports a two inch voice coil, 11 millimeter one way X max, 22 millimeter overall, 80 ounce Y35 magnet, long strand Kevlar cone for added strength, cast aluminum basket, as well as integrated 12 gauge spring loaded terminals. Overall, these are great subwoofers. I've used them for several years. Thanks to Savard for sponsoring this video. If you wanna check these out, make sure you check links in the video description. Use code WOW7 for 7% 7 off these or other Savard subwoofers. Let's go on to more flexing. We have the Soundfly bridge, both channels set to low pass. We're gonna see what it does with this six and a half inch subwoofer by itself. It's a rare moment when I'm truly shocked. This $50 amplifier was pushing this six and a half inch sub like a boss. What do you say we try the woofer test, six and a half inch high Q subwoofer with the $50 four channel amp? Okay, I know it just doesn't seem right to use a four channel amp powering a subwoofer, especially a $50 one, but man, this one performed well. Now it's time to be the mad scientist, take this amplifier apart so we can see what it looks like on the inside. And here we have all the screws, the amplifier board. We also have the bottom plate and the top plate, which is aluminum construction. Here with the amp, you can see there's not a whole lot going on here. And again, going back to the Stetson IR400.4, which looks very, very similar to this. However, 
I did notice that the chip that's used on the Stetson does not appear to be the same. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a model off of the chip that's used. This is a class D4 channel. And back to the SoundFi, again, when we look at closely at the board, we can see the chip there right in the middle, but we cannot identify what actual model it is. You can see lots of capacitors here. You can see some resistors. Again, class D four channel amp that is tiny, 16 volt, 3300 microfarad capacitors there. And for the rails, 50 volt, 470 microfarad. And there is the class D chip, which is the heart of this tiny amplifier. And on the back, you can see all of the ground plane for the circuit board. Now let's move on to the pros and cons of this SoundFi SA400.4. First up, ultra compact size, two, three, or four channel operation. Sounded okay and actually made that sub flex good. Has good efficiency, um, mid 70s to mid 80s in most cases. $50 at the time of the video, really a no brainer if you just want an amp to play around with or want something for the garage or something for an extra car. Things to consider, it was overrated, did not meet its ratings. Fixed crossovers when you use low pass plus 14 dB at 45 hertz on the sub. Speaker wiring, you having to double up one of the channels. There's no two channel option and also no Bluetooth. But again, it's only 50 bucks. I've got to say over the years, my favorite amps to test are the old school amps, of course, as you guys know. But when I come across something like this for $50 that I can share with you guys and show what it does and then show it flexing that six and a half inch Savard sub like nobody's business, I just smile all the way and thank you guys so much for supporting me, for watching this, leaving me a comment below, smashing the thumbs up. I appreciate you guys as always. Till next time, this Big D, I'm out of here. Those who stick around to the end know you're going to get something extra. Let's try two ohms bridge dynamic burst at one kilohertz. What can we get? Check this out over 500 watts for this palm size sound five $50 amp. Wow.